Hello, good morning. Today we'll be making fish cake. My favorite meat. Those are bassa fish. The white meat, and you have to uh, to take the water out of the fish to make a good fresh fish. Because if you keep the water in the fish, it gets soggy. So you have to dry it up, put spices, salt and pepper, seasoning salt, and that's all. We'll be making fish shake. So right now, we have to tear potatoes. Here is like peeled potatoes. Cut in half and turn into a saucepan. Add water and salt. Cook. Cover and cook until tender, about 20 minutes. Now, after you put your half a cup of carnation milk, carnation milk, half a cup, and you let it simmer for about 5 10 minutes, and then you put your fish in the pan with the milk. See, I'm putting my fish like this. Yeah, it's gonna come on flaky. You don't need to cook, cook, to cook this very uh, fast, no. Until your milk dissolves, yeah. yeah. It's all gonna come apart, yes. You see, so we let it simmer, yes. Yeah, and the fish will come flaky, yes. It's gonna go up and let it boil with the milk, and it's gonna come really flaky and it'll detach itself. And that's why it makes flakes fish. Yes, it's very easy and good, good, good. It's a real recipe for the fish cake. So, you see, the fish is starting to be white. Once you see that there, you, you turn your fish around and you put your stove top uh, about medium high heat. Yes, yes. And uh, you'll see all my fish are going to be ready pretty soon. It doesn't take very long, no. You got to watch it though. You don't want to cook it too much. Just going to... You see my, my fish there, it's not watery. It's all fish. It's not water and fish. It's all fish. Because I've drained it, I ripe it down, and I spiced it. Salt, pepper, seasoning salt, whatever you want to you like to put on whatever you desire yeah see even if it's a little bit pink in the middle it's gonna cook again yes because i have to cook it again to make my my uh, breadcrumbs uh, it's not even breadcrumbs it's only flour and uh, it makes it uh, the nice crust on your fish cake yes so uh, don't worry if there's pink in your fish you see, now everything has been cooked and I put it in my mixer. I put a little bit, two tablespoons of butter in it. They don't say to put butter in the recipe, but I do. It's my preference and I put butter. Just bring a little bit of taste out of it. So I put two tablespoons of butter and you put your white fish, your mashed potato and you put a little bit of cream at the, at the time there to see. You need to have a, a smooth and stiff dough like. Yes. So keep the milk and put a little bit at a time until it gets smooth and thick. So here we go. We'll start our machine. Now, so you gotta let it cool a little bit to make your dough a little bit it's going to be stiff when it's cool off of it to be able to handle your patties, your fish cake patties. So here we go. Everything is in there. We just got to... So we got to take this, put that away, and let it cool off of it. And then prepare your flour. You can prepare your flour. <coughs> Spices if you want to put in your flour. Yes. So here we go. We pre I prepare my flour. I put rice flour mixed with my all-purpose flour. 
I put half a cup of white purpose flour and then I put two tablespoons of rice flour. But it gives that crisp that you want on your fish cake. That's how it gives you, rice flour. They didn't have that in those days. But I put it in because that's my preference. I add a few little more things. But you don't have to. The simple is better. But me, I just add a little bit of flour because it's crispy. And I like crispy food. So we're going to get prepared for our meatballs. But before that, we're going to do our tartar sauce that goes with that. And uh, we'll be doing tartar sauce pretty soon. Thank you. OK, so we're going to get our tartar sauce ready for our fish cake. Uh, my meat is still getting cooled and now I'm going to prepare my tartar sauce. So I made some homemade mayonnaise and I don't go back on bought mayo. I'll show you one day. Yes. There's my mayo. You put two thirds of a cup of mayo. Two thirds of a cup. And then uh, I put uh, two teaspoons of uh, red hot pepper, like tobacco sauce. I don't have any Tabasco sauce, so I use Charasa sauce. You put about two to three drops, but me, a little bit extra, because I like it when it's tangy, and uh, I like the tangy taste it gives you. So it's my preference. Okay, so, and then you put a teaspoon of onion, a teaspoon of onion. Wait, I put about two, yes. And then you put a teaspoon of chopped pickle. We have put always two. Yes. And then we need the uh, capers. So you put a teaspoon of capers from Unico there, capers. And it does it, it that's what it gives the taste of tartar sauce. You need to put that in. If you don't want it, it's fine. Okay, just do it without it, but it's as you desire. So, I put, me, I put two teaspoons of capers, but they ask for one teaspoon. Okay, so you mix everything together. It has to be a very good, and this is the best mayonnaise in the world. Yes. Helmings there, I'm going to put them with my mayo. <laughs> no, it's only a joke. Okay, so it needs to be mixed. Everything, and it's so good. Yes, it's not white because my mayo is not white. It's half yellow, half white. And that's what it gives you. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. You want to put a little bit of salt, but you'll have enough salt on your fish. So there we go. So here we go. We got our pro our little jar of tartar sauce. Yeah, with the color of charasa too, it makes it look red a bit. Yes, but it's good when it's in two weeks in the fridge. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, it doesn't last very long though. It's about three months. Yeah, that's the resting period is uh, three weeks and. It can get till uh, three months in the refrigerator. Yes. Okay, I forgot to tell you guys, you put a tablespoon of chives, chopped chives, dry or fresh, and the same thing with your parsley. Two tablespoons of chopped parsley, and uh, you mix all that together, and that's what it makes the spices you need to put in. The uh, ch uh, chives, and the parsley. Okay. Now we are starting with the fish cake. I've been using my uh, three inches ice cream scoop and uh, and that's why it looks like it wants it's perfect and it's cold and it holds its shape. Yes, that's why I put the flour, some flour in my fish cake to keep it nice and round and stays together. So my, uh, you can make about, uh, the fish cake, you can make about, uh, they say five serving, and I have about eight serving, yes. 
Okay, that's what I made. Yeah, you can make smaller, you can even make uh, fish balls, uh, like chicken balls, like, but you use fish balls. It's good. So here we go. We did my fish cake, and then we'll dip them in the flour. Meanwhile, you'll prepare your, uh, your pan, your frying pan, with about three inches to four inches of oil, vegetable, what, whatever you have in your, in your cupboard, you just take whatever you have, it's oil. Just fry it and it has to be a high temperature, not a high temperature to, uh, to burn it, but just to cook it just a nice brown. Yes, it doesn't take long, no. About five minutes on each uh, side, that's it. And then you prepare your nice bun. Oh my God, wait till you see the big buns. You see, you have to let the oil do the job, and uh, I'll let you know. You gotta just make sure it doesn't stick to the pan, yes, and it's still boiling away. You see, it's still frying, yes, but don't move it until you can move it in the pan a little bit there. I mean, it's not sticking anymore, but there's a part when you start putting in the pan, it will stick to the pan. You don't move it until it does the job. Okay, me, I'm done now. I gotta do the other side here. Okay. Oh, here we go. There's our fish cake of the day. This is our tartar sauce we made. The nice big buns. Homemade buns. And there we go. So just be careful how you play with your fish dough. Make sure it's dry when it's ready to go in the, uh, in the oil. Don't put too much milk, just a little bit at a time. And uh, <coughs> that's what it is. Thank you, bye bye.